So right now we are on the category page right now. And what we want to do here is we want to basically uh, display basic configurations and we want to display logging. So this is going to be pretty straightforward. So what I'll do is inside the container. So this is just literally a fixed width uh, div and we want to have some text. So I think what I'll do is I'll have a div right over here. This is going to hold, uh, let's see, I want to hold the text with the icon and then underneath this, uh, we're going to have all the categories right over here. Okay. So for the text, I'll probably just put that in another div. So over here I'll do, let's see, basic. I actually need to create some kind of, uh, some kind of topography tag for now. Let's see, you know what? Let me do this const title style dot P. And what I'll do is the font size, we're going to change that to 24 pixels. I think 20, I think 22 pixels should be okay. Yeah, that should be fine. Cause I don't want to keep on, I don't want to keep on setting some CSS over and over again. All right. So there we go. We have basic configurations. Now we need the settings icon. I think we could probably, I think, let's see. The nice thing about react icons is it literally has an entire library of icons so if you don't so they have font awesome for example they also have uh, ionic icons so if you don't like font awesome you can use uh you can use anything you want uh setting let's see I'm trying to see if i could find a settings icon there's also ionic icons so let's try ionic version 5 settings yeah let's try io settings let's see what that looks like Okay, uh, that doesn't look too bad. Could could be a little bit better. Let's try IO settings outline. There we go. I think that I think that's better. Let's change the size to fifty. Uh, maybe forty. Okay, that's not bad. And then now this will be a flex box. I'm gonna go ahead and create a styled component. That will literally just have all of the uh, properties of a flex box. So we're just gonna have display of flex. So that way I don't have to keep on using inline CSS and it makes sense to create something like this so that way we can reuse it but if we want to customize it we can do that as well so if we want to add our own properties such as align items we can do that but it would make more sense to just actually create props for that so for example uh, flex props and I'm going to use the partial so this is going to basically make every single property inside this object optional if we use this partial, uh, I think this is a type, yeah. Well, it's a, it's a generic. Well, it's not, I don't really want to call it generic, but you can basically define your own properties. And when you want to uh, type annotate something with flex props, all of those properties would be optional. So for example, uh, let's see, display is going to be flex align items. We'll make this a string, justify content string, um, flex direction string, anything else we can think of flex start flex end we'll just leave it with these three properties for now if we need any more later on we'll just add them later okay so now if you look over here let me zoom in a little bit more if you see if i type align items that pops up as a prop i'm gonna do center uh let's see what's going on here why is center oh it's because we need to go ahead and actually manage that prop by simply referencing it so uh we should be able to just reference the prop that's passing like this and we can go ahead and do align items so that should fix that for us perfect and we can do the same thing with justify content as well and instead of align items it will be justify content prop and then whatever's passed in for justify content will literally just take place right over here Okay, that's literally how that works. And finally, we'll set up flex direction. Oops. So if we passed in, uh, let's say flex direction, set that to column. This would be column, okay? So let's just go justify content, space between, and you'll see that it will spread out like that, which is great. So that's the first part done.
Okay, the next part is literally just the command prefix and the welcome message. Well, basically the selection. So right over here. I don't think we have any logging properties set up in the data in, in the guild configuration. So we'll just ignore that for now and we'll just deal with the top two. Uh, so the command prefix as well as the welcome message. All right, so let's go ahead and implement that. So uh, let's see. I wonder if we could probably reuse the buttons that we created earlier. Um, I think maybe we could. So that way we don't have to avoid writing too much CSS. Yeah, I think maybe it would make sense we can reuse these rectangular. I don't want to call them buttons, but I will call them, uh, I guess, just a, like a square or something. I don't know. Um, but I think maybe we could reuse that and just change up a couple properties maybe. That way we don't have to have like an entire set of styles you know what i mean um what we could do though is instead of reusing this exactly we can actually just create another style component and inherit all of uh, the styles of this main button component so i'll show you so i'll call this um i don't know what to call this honestly um option button i'm not again i'm not really too good with names but what we'll do is we will Go ahead and pass main button in, just like that. What's going on over here? Export const. Wait, what's going on here? Uh, wait, what's the problem here? Export const. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here. This should be there shouldn't be any problems with this. There should not be any problems with this. I'm not sure why my editor is being weird. Okay, there we go. I, yeah, I don't know what was going on there. Okay, so now if I were to use this button right over here, so it's gonna have to belong right outside here. I'll create a section. And if I use style button. Oh, that didn't want to auto. Did it import? Okay, great. So you can see that it literally inherits all of those properties. But we can just change up a couple of stuff. So for example, we can change the padding. So I think for the padding, I will set that to 10 pixels and 30 pixels left and right. Um, actually, I'll do uh, I'll do 18 pixels top and bottom, and then maybe 20 pixels left and right. I think that that's better. For the width, we could set the width to something shorter. So maybe 300 pixels, maybe. Yeah, I think 300 would be fine. If we, if we also want to add icons too, we could do that as well. But um, cool, and I will change the background color just a little bit. So let me do that real quick. Okay, so the background color is this color right over here, 272727. So you can see that does look a little bit different. Yep. Uh, and then yeah, we can leave the uh, we can leave the uh, the box shadow alone for now. Cool. And we can go ahead and add change the text. So command prefix. See what that looks like. And then we can use welcome message. Okay. And right now uh, they are on they, they are not this is not wrapped in the flex box so we can change that but i think we're not going to use flex box for this i think what's better is we can actually use a grid instead because what's going to happen is you might have a bunch of different configurations you might have like let's say 20 for example it wouldn't really make sense to put them in a flex box because we're not trying to put every single thing um in the flex box though there are ways that you can use flex box for this to have it so that it only has three ele three elements per uh, per row so i think the best thing to do is to use a grid we could use flexbox but uh, i think grid would make it so much more easier so let's go ahead and use grid instead so i'll go ahead and create a style component called grid so it'll literally just have all the necessary properties that we need i'll actually just make this a div and what we'll do is we'll set the display to grid and then what we're going to do is there's a property called grid template columns and I want this to basically be, I, I want there to be three columns, okay? In, unlimited amount of rows, but three columns. And we basically want each column to have, I guess, one FR, one FR, and one FR. So this will be three columns and it each will take a, take a fraction. So what we can do 
is we can go ahead and get rid of this. Okay, let's see what it looks like. So we have it as a grid. Okay, so you can see that right over here, it has all three elements on the same row. And if we add more, it'll display there as well. Uh, I'm not really too much of a fan of the width, to be honest with you. So I think what I'll do is for this styled button, I think, let me see what happens if I change it to 100%. Okay, there we go. And let me see if I can add a grid gap of... Well, actually, let me do this. Let me add a grid gap. Many pixels? I think I want only a column gap instead. Yeah, there we go. Uh, okay, that's not too bad. The spacing here, I think, is coming from the margin. Right over... Yeah, there, there, there's that margin. Let me actually see if I can remove the margin. Yeah, there we go. I think what I'll do is I will just decrease the margin to 4 pixels. I think that'll be a lot better. And I only want it top and bottom. Cool. Actually, you know what? Let me see. Actually, no, we'll leave it alone as 10 pixels. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, we have one, two, three, one, two, three. Cool. And we can also, if we really want to, we can make it uh, four, four columns instead. So maybe if the three columns, uh, maybe if you, maybe three columns might be too little. So you can have four columns and you can configure this however you want. But honestly, I think three, we'll just leave it alone for three for now. Okay. So uh, we'll just have command prefix and welcome message for now. Okay. So when we click on this, what we need to do is we need to navigate to the page to actually update the command prefix or navigate to the page if we click on welcome message to update the welcome message. So we're going to have to actually hard code this. So when we click on command prefix, it will literally programmatically navigate us to the page. Now, before I do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to change the name of style button to text button because I think that makes a lot more sense in my opinion. Okay, it's not really, it's, I think I think text button is a better name because we all we're doing is really just adding text. And if you want to add an icon, you can definitely do that as well, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, so uh, I think that's pretty much it for the uh, for the categories page. If we wanted to add a, if we wanted to add the login category, it'd be very easy. All we would need to do is literally just take this, copy that, paste that down there. And we can see right over here, we have basic configurations down there, but we can just change the name to whatever it is that we need. So let's just call this uh, channel logs, change up the name and icon. So we'll just change this uh, moderation logs, changes to bot logs right there. And then we can change the icon. So there should be an icon for transcript or paper. I think maybe, there is one. Let me see. Newspaper. Yeah, we'll just use newspaper for now. Uh, I can't really find anything better, so we'll just do that. Shouldn't look too bad. Yeah, that's fine for now. Okay, there we go. If we want to add the border, we can just easily add one right over here. One pixel solid. Uh, solid white, and we can see that right over here. Uh, though we could add some, I will add some margin. So let me do that. So first, let me just get rid of the, let me change the opacity a little bit. And then we'll do margin top 10 pixels. The reason why I'm not doing margin on the bottom is because what's going to happen. Let me see what's going on over here. I think we maybe need more. Okay. So yeah. So what's going to happen is, uh, let's say if we want it, let's say if we have a bunch of categories, essentially what I would personally do is I would actually just create a category component or like a category styled container component, and it'll have all these properties and then we would dynamically render them. So we would just need to worry about having a, a margin on the top because if you have a margin on the bottom, it's going to make that gap a lot bigger. And I don't, I personally don't want that. So we'll just leave it as margin top for now. I'm going to increase this to 30. Yeah. I think that's a lot better. Perfect. Okay, so um, like I said, uh, this is pretty much all there is to it. Now, uh, let me go ahead and like I said, we're not work, we're not worried about any functionality right now. Uh, so we'll have to, we'll we'll actually have a dedicated video for that later. But we'll, once that once we're done with all the CSS that is okay. But I will go ahead and set up 
navigation to the command prefix on the welcome message page. And that's very, very simple. All we got to do is create a function called navigate. Or actually, we don't even need to do that. We need to go ahead and use the use navigate hook. So in the previous versions of React Router, you would use the use history hook. But here we use use navigate, and this will allow us to navigate to uh, another location. So when we click on this text button, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and call navigate, and we're going to navigate to uh, guild slash, what did I call it again? Let me check. Oh, I'm sorry. It's dashboard slash prefix. There we go. Okay, and then when we click on the welcome message, we go to dashboard. I think it's message. Yeah, I think I named it message. Let me just double check. Perfect. So let's, let's test it out. So click on that. We're on the guild prefix page. Click on this. We're on the welcome message page. Okay. And like I said, these, uh, these pages should know which guild is currently selected. If we were to visit it directly, it should redirect us to the menu page. Okay, so now that we have the navigation for that set up in terms of CSS, because I think we pretty much done, uh, we, we pretty much finished the category page. What's next is the uh, the last two pages, which is just the command prefix and the update welcome message. So that should be a piece of cake.